Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for my September faves and fails. I don't really want to talk about the fail from the month. I've got stuff going on in my personal life, but it's been a bit of a hard month. It's been tough. So most of my favorites are food because here's the thing about comfort eating. It actually works. <laughs> so I've been discovering some new delicious treats and snacks and I wanted to share them with you as part of my favorites. The first one being this Cully's hot sauce. It's the Chipotle one in specific. I'm new to Cully's. I hadn't tried this as a brand before, but I actually bought this for a bottle. I'm doing like a whole pantry organizing makeover, which hopefully I'll share with you once it's all finished. And I wanted a bottle, a glass bottle, kind of this shape and size. So that's why I bought this initially, but I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you how many of these I've bought since because this is so delicious. I'm not a fan of really spicy things. I do like some spice, kind of, more lately I've been getting into more spicy foods, but when I say spicy, if you know Nando's, mild, like their mild chicken or whatever, that is about as spicy as I like it, so not very spicy at all. So when I was looking at these bottles, there are different ones that Cully's does. This was level four, so they go from one to 10, and I thought, oh, that sounds nice, Chipotle, it's gluten-free, all that jazz, I'll get that for the bottle. This isn't, I wouldn't call this spicy. I don't think it's, it's hardly spicy at all, but it has the most delicious flavor. It's got the smoky depth to it. It is so good. And like I said, I've bought so many bottles of this over the last month. I'm just going through it. I have it on everything. It's so yummy. Grant prefers this one, the level three, the fair day one. But yeah, this one is my favorite really good and i love that it's gluten free and it's pretty clean ingredients it doesn't have all sorts of rubbish in it we also got the i think it's called chicken rib it's some kind of a marinade or basting sauce that was also delicious we've been enjoying that on meats and chicken which go on the barbecue or just under the grill or whatever so i'm really happy to have discovered cully's this is a new zealand brand and they do like all sorts of mayonnaises as well which are vegan and they've got all different flavors there is maize starch in those, so I can't eat those, but the hot sauces and the, the basting sauce, we've really been enjoying. And you can get it direct off the Cully's website, which I'll link below, or we just bought these in Countdown or Pack and Save. They didn't have the full range, but they did have these. I've really been enjoying tuna mayonnaise, and then I put this Chipotle hot sauce in and cut up gherkins or pickles. I get the Sun Harvest brand. Grant and I have actually been obsessed with pickles lately. I never used to like pickles, but then in the last few years, I've started liking them. In fact, this has happened with a few things. I used to hate avocado when I was growing up. I used to tell people I was allergic to it so they wouldn't be offended when I picked it out of a salad. And then one day in my 20s, I was just like craving avocados and I thought it was so weird because I couldn't even remember what avocado tasted like, but I just wanted it. And so I got one and started eating it and I've enjoyed it ever since then. In the last year or so, I've started wanting more spicy things, like not super spicy, but more spicy than I previously would have enjoyed. I started liking prawns, which I never liked before. And then also gherkins or pickles. I never used to like them, but now I cannot get enough of them. And Grant actually feels the same way. He's really been enjoying them as well for some reason. And like I said, I'll take tuna, mayonnaise, this hot sauce, and then the pickles and I cut that up into it and then I put in the mangrind salt that I talked about in the previous favorites which I will link over here and it is so so delicious and then I either have that on like paleo toast or on rice crackers which kind of leads me into my next favorite which are rice crackers that I've discovered now I can't eat just any rice crackers a lot of them have potato starch in or maize starch or things that I can't eat because I have so many like food intolerances and whatnot but these are so good and I can actually eat them. And it's the Peckish brand. First I bought this, I just like ripped into it. I didn't know I'd be saving the package. It's the Peckish Fancies. And this one is caramelized onion and balsamic vinegar flavor. Oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how good these are. In fact, I could have actually brought an intact package out because I have bought more of them because I cannot stop eating them so so delicious it just i love salt and vinegar anything but this isn't like harshly sour vinegar it's got this mellow sweetness from the caramelized onion it's just so delicious and they're kind of you can see from the picture there they're kind of thin and crispy 
and they just go down a treat. I've also tried this flavor, which I had the foresight to cut open neatly, which is the vine tomatoes and basil. This was also super delicious. They do another couple of flavors. I think they do like a parmesan and herbs and something with cheese but i can't eat cheese or dairy so these are the ones i've tried it says air baked layers so you can just imagine how light and crispy they are so delicious this is my new favorite cracker these i don't have with the tuna mixture on i just have that on plain rice crackers these are like if you're wanting chips like i've been wanting crunchy savory snacks and i can't eat potato chips because i can't eat potatoes so this is a really really good substitute Another snack that I've been enjoying, yes, I've been enjoying all the snacks, and yes, I have gained weight because of it, but like I said, comfort eating actually works, and it makes you feel better in the moment, so it's just been a month. It's been a year. It's been a year for all of us. I'm not going to go into it. Anyway, here's the next snack. These Gray's Skinny Dipped Almonds. I've talked about Gray's Skinny Dipped Almonds before. I've been enjoying the dark chocolate coated ones for ages. They also do like a cocoa dusted one and a raspberry or berry dusted dark chocolate one they've now brought out milk chocolate which i haven't tried and then this one which is white chocolate berry dusted so just to reiterate what they are they are almonds but they've got a very thin or skinny coat of the chocolate it's not a thick coat okay i can kind of fool myself that the dark chocolate almonds are a healthy treat not really i mean yeah but you can kind of fool yourself these are straight up dessert. So sweet and delicious and berry and creamy and yeah. Be warned, you can't stop after just a couple. Once you start, you're going to want to eat them all. But these are really delicious and I did want to mention them. I have very loose ligaments. I have a bit of a connective tissue issue. And my joints are kind of loose and sometimes I get joint pain and... I've talked about it before you know i have shoulder issues i'm supposed to be doing physio every single day which i haven't been doing but i've been wanting to try collagen for a while and i just hadn't really looked into it further than that and then my friend cami was visiting and she had the dose and co collagen non-dairy creamer and she had it i think in the caramel flavor and so i got to taste it and it was so delicious so i thought i'd pick some up now dose and co is sold through pack and save and our pack and save in the non-dairy creamer only had the vanilla they didn't have the chocolate or the caramel so I didn't have a choice which one to get so I bought the vanilla this is what it looks like and it is just a powder now this can be put into your coffee or any other hot drink I actually put it into my smoothie in the morning pretty much every morning I have a smoothie with frozen banana I put in almond milk peanut butter cocoa and hemp seeds and then I put in my liquid zinc that I have as well and this as an addition has just taken it to another level it's like it's so delicious it's like having dessert for breakfast it has the collagen obviously in it and it has this sweet it's not like overly sweet it's slightly sweet but this creaminess to it so there are the ingredients in case you're interested I I wanted to try this because I wanted help with my nails now cami said she has seen a huge difference in her hair and her skin and her nails and my skin's pretty well behaved most of the time my hair is really thick and strong i don't have any problems with my hair but my nails are thin and they peel and they flake and they bend and i've tried so many different things and i'm hoping that the collagen will help and with my joints as well but it's kind of too soon to tell so i just wanted to mention this in case you're looking for collagen or in case you're looking for a non-dairy creamer they also do a dairy creamer and they do protein powder as well this is a new zealand brand it is clean ingredients and it is plastic free so they used to have a scoop they no longer do i just pop it on my scale and take out 20 grams in the morning so hopefully it will help the collagen will actually give me some benefits over time but even if it doesn't it's really delicious in my smoothie so that's all for food. Going on to beauty or fashion favorites, I finally kicked the Revolution Eyelid Primer to the curb. I just could not anymore. Not only did it not help as a primer, I actually feel like it made things worse. I feel like it made my eyelids feel almost like they were sweaty. It was horrible. So it was a huge tube. It would have taken me years to use up and I just, I was done with it. So then obviously I needed a primer. So I picked this one up. It is the Wet n Wild photo focus eyeshadow primer 
it just comes in a little tube and I like that there isn't any like doe foot applicator or anything you just squeeze out what you need and it's worked really well I find it it kind of goes on easily it blends well it dries down and then it does a good job with my eyeshadow so I wanted to mention this because it is so inexpensive I usually use the elf one but when we went to Kmart there were just no elf products pretty much on the shelf I showed it in a vlog there was just nothing there were no primers to be had I couldn't get it online well I probably could have if I looked further afield but I decided I wanted to try something different and this one I want to say it was about eight dollars so I'm happy with this one and wanted to mention it as a good inexpensive option as far as homey things or household items I have been loving my new tap when we did our little kitchen makeover we got ourselves a new kitchen mixer tap and it's one that has like a pull down hose and that's really the feature I was going for but this one also comes with like if you press the button it goes into a spray like a shower head spray or you can just have the single stream like a normal tap and honestly I didn't think I was going to use the like shower head spray function very much but I actually use it quite a lot it's just it's just needed sometimes and this tap has been great it's been good quality it's held up well it is such a pleasure to use and that pull down hose has just it's been transformative <laughs> as much as a tap can change your life i've really really been enjoying it so it is the i want to get this right the Coroma elements husk sink mixer and we got it from bunnings i think it was 178 dollars i will link it down below really good tap good purchase and i've so been enjoying it as far as entertainment goes, when my friend Cammy was visiting recently, she introduced us to a show called Your Homemade Perfect. I believe this was shown in England or in the UK somewhere. And the only place we found that shows it online is a site called Daily Dose, I think. I will try and link it down below. There were only a few episodes, but we absolutely loved this. So the premise of the show is there's a couple who have been needing to solve a problem in their home. The layout doesn't work or it's dark or whatever. The home layout and design just doesn't work and they can't come to a conclusion of how to solve it. And usually they've been battling back and forth with this problem for many years. So there are two architects that come in and they each come up with a design, but they actually get the couple to put on like the um, virtual reality glasses and then they can walk them through and you get to see this as well so it's so cool to see the house as it was like it's in like virtual reality 3d or whatever and then it just transforms in front of you like walls fly out and furniture disappears and windows pop up and new walls come in and new levels and and then you can see their design and then they choose from one of the two designs and they can tweak it and they can change finishes and they can even merge some of the two ideas together if they want to and then at the end of the program you go and see which design they chose and how it turned out we really enjoy the presenter and the architects and the ideas are just they just make you think differently and it's so fun to see it come to fruition at the end and this virtual reality way of showing a client your design i just think everyone should be doing it it just makes sense it's it's great to be able to put them into the space and move through it and actually get a feel for how it would be if they chose that design. I wish we had access to more episodes because we really enjoyed the few that we did get to watch. On Netflix, we've been enjoying a couple of shows that are very opposite to each other. One is The Great Family Cooking Showdown. I think that's what it's called. It's similar to like The Great British Bake Off kind of idea. So Nadia Hussein is one of the presenters. You know I enjoy her. And so there's two presenters and there's two judges and they'll get two families in and they need to each cook like in the studio they need to cook a what is it there's like a, a challenge they have to do like a budget meal and sometimes there's a theme to it and sometimes there isn't and so they each need to cook this budget meal and then the judges get to taste it and see what they think and then they go and cook something in their own homes which is like a family favorite so they do a main and a dessert and the judges come to their home and taste it and then they go back to the studio and then they do impress the neighbors so they do a starter and a main and then obviously the judges get to taste that as well so then in each episode one family goes through so at the end you have the winners going together and then in the end obviously there's an ultimate winner grant and i really enjoyed watching this we enjoyed seeing all of the food everything looked so delicious and it was inspiring i came up with some different ideas of things to cook so highly recommend that and then the other one which like i said is a bit of an opposite it's not cozy and fun and family oriented it's called i am a killer 
and it's just been so so interesting we haven't finished the series yet but basically it's kind of like documentary style they go into a prison and they will interview somebody who's on death row or in prison for life for murdering somebody and they will hear that person's story and it's just really interesting to hear about it from their perspective how it came about what actually happened sometimes they share some of their background and then they go and they interview maybe the homicide detective or friends or family of the killer or of the victim and you hear both sides of the story it's so so interesting and each one is a little bit different there was one episode where the person who was the murderer was telling their story and crying but there were no tears so I wasn't buying it like and then there's some where your heart just breaks for them and you see that they are as much of a victim as the person that they killed and then there's some where you watch and you kind of feel sympathetic towards the killer but then you hear from the other side and you realize that they're just fabricating their own reality and it's just really really interesting not viewing for children i would not have little ones around if you're watching this but really interesting to to get those two perspectives and i feel like it's really well done and well presented and well put together so if you're interested in that sort of thing then it's a good one to watch on Instagram, somebody new who I've been following is Bianca. Her Instagram is at Bianca Mary Miller. I will link it below. And she is a nurse who lives in Palmerston North. And she is into organizing. And her pantry is the thing of dreams. <laughs> like I can't stop looking at a picture of her pantry. You need to go over and have a look at how she's organized her home. It's absolutely stunning. It's just the most Pinterest perfect pantry I've ever seen in my life. So do go over and check out her pictures if you want some soothing, beautiful to look at images of organization. On YouTube, I've been enjoying Mama Full Time. She is just so perky and cheerful. She doesn't just post like happy-go-lucky sunshine and rainbows things. She does keep it real, but I love her manner. She just seems to be a positive person. Um, I really just enjoy her take on things. She has two kids, I think, and they are currently doing school from home. So she shares a bit of that and how she's organized the space. And she shares vlogs and that sort of thing. I've been enjoying her channel. And then also I discovered the Impatient Gardener. Her garden spaces are just gorgeous. I love what she shares. She lives in a very different zone or climate to me, but I can still take inspiration. And just the name of her channel, the Impatient Gardener, that is me. I'm the impatient everything actually but also with gardening so do go and check out her channel if you want to see some gardening she's in the US I think she's in a zone three and then I read seven books in the month of September and here's what they were and what I thought of them I read worth dying for by Lee Child this is one of the Jack Reacher books this one was pretty hectic I do enjoy all of his books they're just ripping good kind of action books it's like watching an action movie but in your head I guess <laughs> You can read these out of order because they're not written in order, although this one did follow on from the one before it. I read Starfish Pier by Irene Hannon. This is one of the Hope Harbour books and I've really enjoyed the whole series. I read Then, Now, Always by Isabel Broom. This book was okay. I didn't find the main character very relatable at all. Maybe I'm not the target market for this book. It was just okay. I read Bonfire Night by Deanna Rayborn. This is one of the Lady Julia Grey books. This was just a novella, so it was a quick read. I finished At Home in the World by Tish Oxenrider. This is kind of a memoir of her travels around the world with her family. She has a husband and three children, and she explores being a homebody and really having a longing for home and roots while at the same time experiencing wanderlust and wanting to travel and needing to travel. And I really enjoyed this, the insights that she gained along the way and also just the experiences they had while traveling the world. I read 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. I absolutely loved this book. I loved the way it was written. This is probably my book of the month. The writing at times reminded me of Lainey Taylor's way of phrasing things or just kind of... I just, I loved it. I would highly recommend this book. It is a romance, but it's not like frivolous chiclet. It, it just has a bit more depth to the phrasing, the writing. It's been crafted and I really enjoyed it. 
I read Surgeon's Hall by E.S. Thompson. This is one of the Gem Flockhart books. It's one of a series and it's just so different. I've really been enjoying this series and I would recommend it, but do read them in order. So those are my favorites for the month of September. I would love to know what you've been enjoying and if there's anything that you think I would enjoy, I would love you to share it down below if it's a recipe or a product or snacks. I'm all about the snacks at the moment, although I kind of need to rein in the snacks and stop eating for comfort and pleasure and eat for nutrition. Yeah, I need to kind of rein that in, but I'm always here to hear about snacks if you want to share any or anything else that you think I might enjoy. I always welcome your suggestions. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.